Hey guys, we are going to talk about something very scary today. By the way, my name is Justin Miller. This is the Wiz Ive Show, if you didn't already know that. And what, pretty much what the Wiz Ive Show is, is about bringing down some wisdom from God and putting it into life. Or pretty much just living out the Christianity, what, what Christianity really is in the Bible. It's pretty awesome. Actually, just let me rephrase that. It's really stinking awesome. It's better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, so actually today we're going to look at... The Doomsday Preppers. Have you heard about the show? That show called The Doomsday Preppers? <laughs> I think it's so interesting. But the end of the world is going to be coming here shortly. Let's see, it's nine days? I believe nine days. The end of the world is going to come. So this, that would mean that this is my second to last video I'm going to be making for you guys. And then I'm going to be going home to heaven. <laughs> okay. As you know, the Mayan calendar runs out on the 21st of December, nine days from now. And according to lots of people, I think there's like three million people in the U.S. actually, they believe that the world is going to end, that the Mayan, the calendar runs out, so that's going to be the end of the world, the end of time. That's the way it is. And then other people like me think that it's, well, it's the end of the calendar. Every, every year, uh, end of our calendar comes up on December 21st, 31st, so that means you know, we just start a new calendar. But people think it take it a little bit more seriously, I guess. Anyway, I found some really interesting stuff online. I thought I'd share it with you guys. First of all, the Huffington Post says that 1 in 10 people believe that the world will end in 2012. Holy cow, 1 in 10 people. Seriously, a lot of people think that the world's actually going to end in the next couple of weeks within the next couple of weeks. Kind of interesting. One man from Phoenix keeps 1,000 tilapia fish, tilapia, I have no clue how to pronounce that, in the deep end of his swimming pool, when, which he plans to eat when a massive solar flare knocks civilization back to the Stone Age. Hmm. Maybe we should all get a bunch of fish. We have a pond in the back. Maybe we should go fill it up. Completely. Okay, then while, no, it goes on to say, while a couple living in a gated community with 25,000 rounds of ammunition, ammunition, if I can say it right, have enough food to last half a century. Dude, I better start stocking up here. This could get scary. I mean, the end of the world. Think about it, guys. <gasps> Okay, then it also says more than 300,000 people a month visit the movement's website, survivalblog.com, which catalogs how people are preparing for the worst. And the doomsday prepper thing, you know, is kind of interesting. Like there's this guy that has all these AK-47s, all these, every, all this, lots of people. It says, I think there, it says somewhere online I saw it's like 3 million people. Are, are getting ready in America are getting ready for the end of the world to happen here and so, so a lot of them are like well it might not happen but it's good to prepare anyway so in case something will happen because it's kind of it kind of seems like it's going that way or something or that's what they think now personally there's there's only one there's one thing that I think about and that is well actually a lot of things that I think about because my mind is constantly going but one thing that I'm thinking about now is the fact that the Bible says that we will never know when the end's going to come. Pretty easy to, you know, kind of know that. But these people are living on faith, fear, not on faith. That's another thing I want to point out. That's kind of the big thing I want to point out in this, this video is that fear versus faith thing of a barbadoodle. Anyway, fear, they're being controlled by this fear, so every waking hour, they're thinking about, well, if the world's going to end, what can I do? If, and they'll plan out these ridiculous stuff that could happen and, you know, try to make sure that they got enough food, they got enough everything of this and everything of this for when the world ends. And they're living by fear, not by faith. Now, with that, one thing, another thing I think about is I'm kind of making fun of these people. And I'm sorry if you're one of those people who believe that. you got to realize that if you don't live by fear, you can't live by fear. You gotta live by faith. That's the only thing to live by because without faith it is impossible to please God. Now, one thing I think about also is Noah. A lot of people made fun of Noah. 
when he was building this ark and all of a sudden the end of the world actually did come and Noah was saved because he had an ark and so I guess my thing is if God tells me to literally go comes down here and gives me a detailed plan like he gave Noah and tells me Justin you gotta do this you gotta do this you gotta do this to get ready for there isn't I am gonna be sending something down here and I want you to be prepared then I will definitely I will go out and I will prepare but if I don't get that from God and then instead I, I let my emotions and and the, my mind control what I'm going to be doing instead of letting God control what I'm going to be doing and then it just gets messy because that's what I, I a lot of people are letting their emotions get in the way and their emotion the emotion of fear is very very powerful a lot of people they in advertising one of the good things to use as far as getting people to buy stuff is fear because you if you draw out a fear of some in somebody people just go nuts that's why there's three million people actually doing something with this because fear is so controlling it's so drawing it is if if a, if a country can instill fear into its people about something about something then they can control the people because fear is very very controlling and it's a move of the devil so as far as me in my house we will serve the Lord That's the way it is yep <laughs> I, I, one thing I think about is like what, what Paul says, to live as Christ and die as gain. So if actually the end of the world does come and God didn't tell me to prepare, then I, I wasn't supposed to prepare. So I'm, you know, cool, I'll be in heaven with, with Jesus and stuff. I mean, that's pretty awesome. So I don't, if the end of the world comes, so be it. I'm, 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 I'm prepared anyway, any which way. Because here's, here's the biggest thing, the Bible also talks about about being prepared because when we don't know when he uses the example that we don't know when the thief will come to our into a house to destroy it otherwise we'd be ready for it at that time but and just like that we don't know when the end of the world is coming only the father knows not even the son not even Jesus knows when he's going to be coming back only father only father God knows that and since he's the only one that knows it we got to be ready at all times that's the biggest thing. So I, I guess I want to challenge you today is, are you ready? Would you be ready if the end of the world would come in 21st, on the 21st? If Jesus would come back on the 21st, would you be ready? Are, are you living your life in a total obedience and faith in God? Because that's, you know, that's, that's what matters. The biggest thing that matters is obedience, obedience and faith. Because if you love God, you will be obedient. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, that's the biggest thing. Are you ready? Me personally, I, I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with God. In a, actually, more so in the last two months than I've ever been. And I, I, I'm like, bring it on. Bring it on. Actually, I'm thinking, one thing I thought about um, before I was making this episode is I was thinking about the doomsday preppers and being ready about all that stuff is the uh, movie Ice Age. Um, I think it's the sec it's the second movie I believe it's the meltdown I believe I say it's the melt meltdown where um at the beginning of the movie there's this I can't think of what the animal's called but he rolls into a, this ball when he gets scared when he feels th threatened but he's trying to sell people on tomorrow there will be a cloudy day or something like that and then the end of the world and everybody's like oh. <laughs> Those movies are hilarious, but and, and they're good, family friendly. So anyway, the point is, think about that, and that, that you know people respond to fear because fear is controlling. And with that, as far as fear being controlling, one thing I think about is going out and witnessing to people. For myself personally, I I try to share Christ wherever I go. I don't always because there's a fear that holds me back sometimes. And it's a fear that I got to get rid of because if I have truly have faith in, because if there is fear in anything but God, then there's no faith. Fear is the absence of faith. And faith is the absence of fear. If you had truly have faith as small as a mustard seed, so you can move mountains. But because of fear of what other people might think about you trying to move this mountain and other kinds of fear, whatever it may be, you don't do it, you don't actually pursue that because you don't have faith. 
like for Peter, one thing I think about is Peter in the boat when he he actually kind of caused the miracle of himself walking on the water to happen because he said, "Lord, if it's really you, then t- say, tell me to come," because he knew that Jesus would tell him to come without hesitation. So Jesus was like, "Come." And he didn't say, come, Peter, which I'm guessing the, all the disciples could have probably stepped out on the water right then and walked toward Jesus on the water. And then, so Peter, it's like, he actually took the step out of the boat, which is incredible. That's, that's where, where faith overtakes fear. Because in that moment, he didn't have any fear. Or he wouldn't have been, had the faith to actually step out. Because faith removes fear. And so he had the faith to actually step out of the water, take those steps. And because of that, he experienced something incredible, supernatural. And as soon as he looked around in the waves and fear started settling in, then the fear overtook his faith and he started sinking. See, that's the thing with going out and sharing Christ with people, which one thing, as I said, I'll be doing in that last while is that this Saturday I'm going out to a mall to just for a couple hours just to pray for people and witness to people and share Christ and stuff like that. Sounds really interesting. Now, the biggest thing for me, and one thing that you can pray about for me, is to, for me to help help me just to get rid of that fear. Because if you get rid of that fear and just live by faith and truly put your trust and obedience completely in God, that's what, that's what, that's what it means to love God. And if somebody is very intimate and in love with God, that's what God created us to be. He created us to be intimate with Him. That's why Adam and Eve, when He created Adam and Eve, He walked with them in the garden to be that relationship with Him and that encounter with God. That's, that's, what we, that's what we're made for. And when we have that relationship in place, and when we have that love in place, incredible things can happen to us through our faith and our trusting in God. So simply our trusting in God and through our obedience to what God tells us to do. A lot of the times, it's going to look like walking on water. Impossibility. Completely impossible to walk on water unless you have, have Jesus with you. And He tells you to. He's like, come. Obedience. Okay, I come. You know? And it's faith and obedience. So, that's something I'm challenging myself with, is to simply go out in faith and trust that God will give me the people to talk to and that they, yeah, even if they're not responsive, that I can plant a seed that can get them to think about it later on, you know? I just got to have faith in that and obedience and get rid of that fear. So, that's one thing I'm renouncing right now is in just in the name of Jesus. I just get rid of fear and if you're watching this, I just, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just, Lord, just completely get rid of their fear. So you can go out and you can do the same thing as I'm hoping to do, as I'm planning on doing It's going out and being a witness and being a, such a true witness and a faithful and obedient witness that I can feel like Peter and the impossible can happen because God is the author of the impossible. He does the impossible. He it is an impossible thing. Pretty awesome. Really awesome. So let's go out there and do that. Anyway, now for next week, I have a question for you that I thought was very interesting. It's pretty much just yesterday, I read this article about this couple that before marriage, they didn't have sex, which is a good thing. You, you shouldn't have sex before marriage. It's adultery. And then once they got married, and... To this day, which is two years, 25 months later, they still haven't had sex. Their, their, they, their, thought is, their thought process is that since if it's holy not to have sex before marriage, then it must be double as holy having it after marriage. So I guess my question is, what are your thoughts on that? Simply, is it, is it holy? Do you, you think it is double as holy to not have sex after marriage? And why do you think so? Put in the comment section below. I'm looking for your responses here because this is an interesting question here. So what do you think? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or are they just acting foolish? Because, you know, different things can make people act foolish. One thing is fear that we talked about. Another thing is, you know, looking good in the eyes of other people, which is kind of a fear of fear. I don't know if that is, but I don't know. If you're not there and what it comes down to, what do you think? 
And anyway, we'll talk about that next week. See what we come up with here, huh? Okay, then let's see. Last week, I asked the question, what is the third heaven as mentioned in 2 Corinthians 12.2? If you remember, in 2 Corinthians 12.2, Paul says, I know of a man who 14 years ago was went up to the third heaven, either in spirit or in body, I don't know, but he heard unexpressible things or something like that. It's something along that line. And he says the third heaven. And I was like, third heaven? What, you, what is he talking about, third heaven? Well, first of all, you got to know who he's writing to, the Corinthians. And the Corinthians believed, well, there was kind of part of them that believed in seven heavens and a part of them that believed in three heavens. And by the heavens, well, first of all, that when, when in the beginning, in Genesis, it says, in the beginning God created earth and, or created light, whatever it says. But it says that the heavens, he part of the heavens or whatever. And see, the heavens to them was like the sky, was the heavens. And so their thought of the heavens, of the three different parts of heavens, was that well, there's the heaven down here on earth, that's the heavens, the sky, whatever, on earth. Then there's the second heaven would be the spiritual realm that's on earth, like the demonic powers and stuff. And then the third heaven was actually up in the presence of God. So that's what the third heaven actually means, by the way. Which is very interesting if you if you think about that, and you also think about the verse that talks about um, in Ephesians 2, I believe it is. How, I'm not sure what this verse is. I, see, that's my problem. I know a lot of verses in the Bible and what the Bible says, but I can't. I couldn't tell you where the verses are. But anyway, it says that we are seated in heavenly places. When it talks about heavenly places, it's literally talking about seated in the third heaven with God. So when you become born again, you're actually your 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 spirit is seated in heaven, which is really really stinking cool. If you ask me, if that doesn't does do something for your identity of who you are. And if you live out of that place beside God in heaven, that means you have power over the second heaven and the first heaven, because you're in the third heaven. Make sense? If you live out of that sense of knowing that you have power over the demonic forces and the things that happen on this earth that doesn't happen in heaven, you have power over that. Like sickness. That's your true identity. That's what the Bible says. And that's that's why the disciples, Jesus and the disciples, were able to cast out demons and heal the sick and do all that kind of stuff because they were seated in heavenly places. So anyway, just a little tip there. But the biggest thing I want you to get from this this video is that get rid of your fear. Fear, in, increase your faith. Just completely fall in love with God. And it says that if you love God, you will obey Him. And it's not something hard to do. It just comes natural. It's just part of, you know, loving Him. And obeying Him is just, well, it's, it's common sense. And it's not hard. It's not slavery. So obey him and have faith. Just walk in faith. That's that's what I want to do. Just fuller and in a fuller way. Because some a lot of times I overcome that fear, and then there's times that I don't. Like I was in the mall last weekend, and I it took me I don't know like 50. I met this guy. It took me about 15 minutes after I met this guy. After he walked, I said, Hey, how are you doing? And I asked him about his cast thing he had on his arm. And then, right then, I, fear overtook me, and I didn't ask him if I could pray for him. I'm like, come on, Justin, have faith, come on, man. And then, um, so anyway, he walked around a little bit, and a little bit while later, I saw him again. And then even a little bit a little while later, I saw him again. And finally, I got the guts to ask him. I got rid of my fear, and was like, okay, I'm doing this in faith. So... It's bad, but God had to show me the guy a couple times before I could actually go up and pray for him. So anyway, we gotta get we gotta get rid of our fear if we want to have faith and want to be able to step out of that boat like Peter did. 
So, as far as news, I am working on an identity report. I've been working on it for a while. But I have this, made this list of like 48 different things that the Bible says that we are when we're a Christian. Very interesting stuff, by the way. I'm trying to figure out what the best way is to get the report started. Should I talk about, you know, how, how, how to become born again and then talk about what it means to be born again? Like the identity after the talking about. That's kind of how it's set up right now. Or should I t more talk about um, pretty much what we were created for and what, you know, what the Old Testament is about, what the law was about, and what the New Testament was about. And then go on from the New Testament. You know, this is our identity. This is what we're supposed to do. And here's the things that you can go through. To, you know, to it's very important to know your identity. You can, you can replace false beliefs and move into the truth through your identity. Stuff starts happening. Tell you why. So that's one thing I'm working on. As far as the Life Changer Challenge, I am right now. In the last while, God has been really showing me a lot of stuff giving me a lot of revelations about stuff that I didn't quite understand in the Bible or I understood it a little bit falsely and one thing I put up a Facebook status today that God does not contradict the Bible but he is very comfortable with contradicting the way you understand the Bible in other words a lot of times the way we understand the Bible isn't quite correct and he's refining my thinking in the last month and a half two months and because of that I'm waiting a little bit to actually put all put all the content together for the Life Changer Challenge because I want it to be truth. I want it to be a real understanding and not contradict with the Bible, cause not let my understanding contradict with the Bible and put it into this, this course and it be a little bit off. You know what I'm saying? So he's been refining that so the, the thing is going to be on hold for a little bit plus I can't video t tape it in, in the winter because I want to do it outside and I don't want to bundle up for it so it'll probably come out next summer. So plan on that, and you can help out in any way you can. And let's see, anything else that needs to be said? I don't believe so. So you guys have a blessed time getting ready for Christmas next, like next it was two weeks, two weeks and minus one day, I believe. 12 days till Christmas, actually today is 12, 12, 12. And so at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock and 12 minutes, I was, what was I doing? I was on Facebook, I <laughs> <laughs> not very cool. I could do something better with my time, right? And so it's 12 days from Christmas, too. It's kind of cool. Last time we'll ever have that because, well, for another 90, 80, 80 years from now, which I don't believe the world will be around for many days. Who knows? Who knows? We just got to be prepared to, for when Jesus comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. So let's go out and live with faith and not with fear because this is an excellent way to talk you know you should try it sometime okay day okay we will talk to you we will see you later my name as always is jason miller and goodbye and god bless have a question that you want me to have on the show well simply go to wizlife.com and click on the support tab and create a new ticket or you can go to youtube and create our video respond. A hundred years from now, what a wonderful day it's going to be to hold the hand that led for me.